William Henry Hans was born on the 10th of November 1951. Hans was left with no mother after she was brutally attacked and killed by a man while he was only young. Not much has been reported about his life as a young boy, but this attack on his mother was clearly a reason for him to turn into the man he eventually became. In his late teens and early 20s, Hans had begun a career in the Marines. He was a well-respected member of the team and was serving for the US when in September 1977, a body of a lady by the name of Karen Hickman, who was a private in the army also, was found. She was aged just 24 and had been beaten and run over by a car, which ultimately killed her. There were no real clues to who the murderer was. And at this time, there was a serial killer on the loose who was named the Stocking Strangler, who was dictating the time from the authorities and media far and wide. So this crime was put on the back burner, but remained an open case. In March 1978, a letter was sent to the police. It was said to be a letter from a radical group who named themselves the forces of evil. They went on to state in the letter that a prostitute by the name of Gail Jackson had been kidnapped and the named group would kill her if the police didn't find the elusive stocking strangler. Police began to look into this threat and found that in fact, Gail had been kidnapped. But unbeknown to the police, she had already been murdered by Hans, and that he was using this as a way of making the police start looking for a group of people rather than him as a singular male. Gail wasn't the real name of the prostitute who had been taken. Her real name was Brenda Gail Faison. She had been approached in her local bar by a male asking her for business. They agreed a price of $20 and a pair got into the man's car, and this was the last anyone would see of Brenda. A few further letters were sent from this newly named group of apparent radicals. The aim was to take the heat from the current murders that were happening and move to see that a group were responsible for the killings. The next letter asked for money, a ransom note. $10,000 was asked for in cash for the forces of evil to be left in a place for them to collect in exchange for the safe release of Gail. Sadly, she had already been killed, a way to blame the police for this murder for not acting sooner. When this threat did not materialize and no ransom was left or taken seriously, Hans penned a further letter. This letter stated that another woman had been kidnapped she was called Irene Thurkild, and she was aged 32. The police knew this to be true, as she had already been reported as a missing person. The threat was made that the stocking strangler needed to be caught before the 1st of June. If not, Irene would suffer the same fate as the previous named victim. Irene was reported to have last been seen with an African-American soldier at the time of her disappearance. Finally, a clue to start the hunt for yet another killer active at the same time as the stocking strangler. The police had gathered information that the person responsible was a soldier from a local army base due to the fact that the station we used was official military paper. After a few days, a call went through to the police call handlers which ultimately led the police to find the body of Irene, just as the call stipulated. She had been beheaded and she was hidden behind some chopped wood. Police reviewed the tapes from the call and found that the caller had a very original distinctive voice and was later identified on the 4th of April as the 26-year-old private who was currently serving in the army by the name of William Henry Hans. Hans was then arrested 
and charged with murder and extortion. He spent time in custody and then confessed in full to the murders of the group called the Forces of Evil. But after realising the severity of such a confession, Hans retracted the statement, then proceeded to claim his innocence. Hans had attempted to cover up his murders, the murders which had already taken place, by writing to and calling the police, making them believe that a group of vigilantes were about killing people mindlessly, when in fact, it was Hans himself. The murders Hans were committing were of extreme violence and needed to be stopped. An FBI profiler was brought in to screen the letters and calls to see what they could come up with. They came to the conclusion that this was the work of just one man who was in the army and in his early 20s, a quite accurate description for the man they had in custody. Hans went on to make and recant statements about the murders which he had committed. He described in gory detail the injuries he inflicted on these poor innocent women, stating that Jackson had angered him and so this was in fact her fault that she was killed. Many psychologists assessed Hans for the defence's motion that he was not mentally capable. They did say that he had a personality disorder and was incapable of showing empathy and that he had difficulties accepting what he had done wrong and could easily blame others for his mistakes. But all of this did not sway the court. The doctor stated that he knew the difference between right and wrong and the motion for not having mental capabilities was denied. Many people came forward in favour of Hans stating they had no idea what this man was capable of, that he had always seemed like a nice, reliable man. He was said to be under a little stress from some marital problems that he was having at the time. A civilian jury found William Henry Hans, also known as the chairman of the forces of evil, guilty for the murder of Brenda in 1978. Evidence was shown in court such as the letters which proved to be written in Hans's handwriting, the voice calls which showed his unique voice and accent, the incredibly accurate profiling from the FBI, footprints which matched shoes that were owned by Hans, and the witness statement saying that Gail was last seen with a man matching Hans's exact description. The jury was said to have sentenced Hans for the vile and outrageous murder of Jackson, stating that it was inhumane and just simply horrible. After being found guilty, it was said that all of the jurors voted in favour of the death penalty unanimously. Hans was still to be heard in a court-martial for the murders of both Karen and Irene as a serving Marine. A sentence of life in prison was added to the already open death penalty. The case wasn't without its drama. A juror on the case insisted that she did not vote for and would never vote for the death penalty. She signed an affidavit to this fact. So it was then assumed this was not a unanimous decision and it wouldn't happen. A stay was given due to the defence team mounting a case against the death penalty and two rejected appeals had already been made. One for clemency was made, stating that Hans was mentally incapable at the time of the murders. But an IQ score of 76 is not classed as mentally incapable. And in Georgia law, it prohibits anyone being executed with diagnosed mental incapabilities. And the second because of the jurors stating the verdict on the death penalty was not unanimous, and that her plea for not having the penalty was ignored Hans was breathing a sigh of relief, but this was short-lived. The execution was now scheduled for 7pm. Six execution dates came and passed due to different appeals. Then a stay was placed so the court could decide if they were to hear the final plea of Hans. The court voted 6-3 to three against hearing the case for Hans, 
and so the Supreme Court Justice, Anthony Kennedy, lifted the temporary stay, which lasted only a couple of hours. And on the 31st of March, 1994, at age 42, the Chairman of the Forces of Evil, also known as William Henry Hans, was sent to the electric chair in the Muscogee County Prison. And at 10.10pm, he was pronounced dead. William Hans was responsible for a killing spree which lasted a year and killed four women. Although he proclaimed his innocence and made a statement to reporters the day before his execution saying his innocence could be proved right now and that this is a strange kind of justice. In his last statement that he made to the public gallery before his execution was a lingering seven minutes in which he asked, why are you executing an innocent man? Why, why, why? Hans was the 18th person to be sent to death in George's electric chair since executions resumed in 1983. Thank you so much for your continued support. Feel free to leave a comment as we enjoy reading them. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to hear more stories from Crime Busters.